Hello. In this video, I will show you how to deploy your Laravel application on the server. In this case, I will be using the Ubuntu server. So the first step is to log into your AWS management console. So when you are logged in, you should see an interface similar to this. And um, to go ahead, right to it, we click on EC2. So we'll give you some time to go up. So in this case, I'll be creating a test server using the free test. So um, depending on your use case, depending on whatever specification you want to use, you can choose whatever instance type you wish to use. So I'll just go right ahead and click on um, instances, you can click on it and then you can click on it. So you can see I have um, no instances running right now. So I'm going to click on this and take some instances. Click. And all I have to do is click on the launch instances. So from here, I have to select which operating system I'm going to use. So in this case, I'll be using Ubuntu. Then I go to enter to search. Then I go to marketplace. You can choose anyone, but I think I prefer using any ones that actually come from the vendor itself to be sure of um, the integrity of the operating system I'm using. So I'll just click on select. So it takes some time to learn. So for this, you just uh, scroll down and then click on continue. Then here is where you pick the instance type. So depending on whatever your workload is going to be, depending on what your use case is, you can select whichever one. On a normal day, I will go for the um, M5 or M4 class. So I will go, I will check them for so you can see different options here. But like I said, this is what I want to. But in this case, I'll be using the T2 micro, which is eligible for the free tier since this is just a test environment and a, more of a tutorial server. So I don't really need much um, processing time. So I'll just select the I'll go on the instance type and move to the next place. So um, in this case, in most cases, I will use this as default. But if you have preferences, depending on where you want to the server to decide what location, you can choose whatever location for this option over here. So in this case, I'm sticking with the North Virginia, which, um, Virginia, which is the um, US East one. And in this case, if you have any preference to where you want the server to be created, what availability, so you can choose that from um, this um, submit. So you can see we have a number of them. We have one A, one B, one C, one T, one E, one F. So each of them represents um, an availability so within not Virginia, in the US, it's one region. So um, I'm going to stick with the A and uh, well, just leave, leave the rest as default on this page, then click on the add stage option. So in the case where um, we are just using one, um, one drive and it's one gig storage, then we can stick to this. So I think for the free day, I still have up to 30 gigabyte of storage that I can create. So you can see from here, um, the features are going to up to 30 gigabyte of storage. And if you want additional storage, then you can click on add user. But that's outside the uh, scope of this uh, short, this tutorial. So I'll just leave that as it is right now. And you notice I'm using the general purpose SSD. The reason for this is because um, the general purpose SSD is much more faster compared to um, the code hard disk. Uh, well, even the code that this is not um, giving us an option yet because it's actually not advisable to use it on the production server because it is based on the normal speed based hard drive that moves so slow compared to what SSD is. SSD is much more faster, so I'll stick to this. And you notice the higher you go in terms of storage, the um, higher the amount of IOPS you get. This means the higher storage you get, the higher the speed of drive you are going to get. So in this case, like I said, I'll stick to that and I'll 
you can be next of them. In this case, where this is where you have tags to whatever resources will be created and assigned to this particular server. So in this case, for identification, identification purposes, I always like to tag um, resources on AWS. So uh, it's easier to identify. So I'm going to name this um, dev. So you see now it's going to tag the instances as dev, tag the body as dev, and tag the network interfaces as dev. So when you are trying to um, get resources assigned um, related to this particular instance, then you can easily get that using the um, name of that particular instance. Then I go right to configuring the um, security code. And in the case of security code, this main just a um, basic firewall that AWS provides you. So you open ports here. So if your ports are not open here, then you are trying some other things on this um, instance eventually, but it might not work like you expected. So um, just to make this easier to identify, so I'm going to change this to dev security. Just like I said, you can give it any name you like, but just for the purpose of this, uh, I'm going to use this. So you can see the SSH port is already open by default. So I'll open a few other ports. So there are some that are pretty fine, there are some that are not pretty fine. Let's um, see. So this HTTP, so let's do HTTP as well. HTTP, I'll put my SQL. Since those are services we are going to use, so at least this is giving us an idea of what we are going to install and configure on server in the uh, nearest future as we go on with this uh, tutorial. Then um, I choose my SQL. I saw that this is my SQL. Then I choose we want FTP server as well. Which is port 21. So I hope this is there by default. If not, um, then we have to put a custom CCP, which is uh, port 80, then we saw 21. Then I'm going to allow everybody to be able to access this. Um, then, so 0 0.0.0 means uh, it's open to the world. Everybody can actually access this using an IP4 address. Then I, I think that's about it for now. We'll still come back here to because we need to open the port for the FTP passive. Um, we need to open the FTP passive port as well. So FTP will not have any problem. But I don't have that right now. We have that by the end of setting up everything. So I'll go ahead and just review the launch. So you can see um, it's talking about some ports open to the world. There's nothing we can do about it because we actually need this port open for things we are going to install to do. So um, in this case, it's actually if you want to create a new SSH key pair, or you want to use it, or you want to use an existing one. So in this case, I have an existing key. And I'm going to use that. But in the case where you don't have an existing key, you can click on create a new key pair, give the key pair, and then you can put the key pair. That is what you are going to use to access the server when you want to access it. So, like I said, I have an existing key, so I'll just use that necessary. Then I'll acknowledge that I have access to this key, then I mentioned the instances. Instance. So, I'll give you some time for it to um, come up. So we have our instance that I will create So I will just click on the instance ID to take us to the instance that was created. So you can see my Ubuntu instance is now running. So the next thing I need to do now is, since this is a production server, we don't want the case where IP address will have to change. So in the case of this now, we call it an ephemeral um, IP address have been assigned to this instance. So you will notice this IP address here. But in the case where you have to stop this instance and start it again, then this IP address over here will change and will cause issues for you in terms of experience. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to assign an elastic IP address to it. So still on the EC2 dashboard, you see 
Um, when you scroll down on this side, but you see the elastic IP address. So you see elastic IP. So I'm going to click on that then. I'll click on allocate elastic IP address. So you can see I'm currently in the region where the server is created. So I'll leave this as it is. And I'm picking from an IP from the Amazon pools of IP4 addresses. Then all I just need to do is um, come down here. I can add a tag just for receive recognition. So I'll choose the same name tag, then I'll choose the. So by doing this, it's also tagging the elastic IP address as well. So I know this elastic IP address is assigned to the server called today. So we've just created the um, elastic IP address, and here is it over here. So all we have to do now is we select this IP address and 